Okay, so question nine asks, how do you find the molecular formula? Okay, so there are different um, ways that we can find the molecular formula, but I'm going to give an example. So I'll make up an example question. So let's say that 2.78 milligrams of ethyl butyrate was combusted and 6.32 times 10 to the negative 3 grams of CO2 and 2.58 times 10 to the negative 3 grams of H2O were produced. Okay, so we need to find both the empirical formula and the molecular formula of ethyl butyrate. And knowing how many grams of both carbon dioxide and uh, water were produced, uh, we can uh, find the answer to this question. Okay, so ethyl butyrate is just made up out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So the first step is to find uh, the mass of carbon that was produced after it was combusted. So we know the mass is 6.32 times 10 to the negative 3 grams. And then we are going to find the number of moles of CO2 by dividing this mass by the molar mass of CO2, which is 44 grams per mole. Okay, so this gives us our moles, which is 1.44 times 10 to the negative 4 moles and now we want to convert this to the moles of carbon so there is one mole of carbon and one mole of co2 and then to find the mass of carbon I'm going to multiply by carbon's molar mass, which is 12.01 grams per mole, to give us a value of 1.72 times 10 to the negative 3 grams of carbon. So this is how much carbon that was uh, produced or that was in the original uh, ethyl butyrate sample. Okay, so now we can do the same thing, but this time finding how much hydrogen was in the sample. So we know the mass of H2O that was produced was 2.58 times 10 to the negative 3 grams of H2O. We are going to divide by the molar mass of H2O, which is 18 grams per mole. So this gives us number of moles equal to 1.43 times 10 to the negative 4.
Okay, so now we are going to find the mass of hydrogen that was produced. So to convert from the moles of H2O to the moles of hydrogen, we know that there are two hydrogen atoms in one water molecule. So we this time we multiply by two. And then we are going to multiply by the atomic mass of hydrogen, which is 1.01 .01 grams per mole, which gives us a final mass of hydrogen that is equal to 2.90 times 10 to the negative 4 grams. Okay, so the only element that is unaccounted for is our oxygen. So since oxygen is in both CO2 and H2O, this is why we do oxygen last, because we know that the remaining grams that are left in the sample are just from oxygen. So all we need to do is convert the total sample of ethyl butyrate to grams, so it is 2.78 times 10 to the negative 3 grams. And then we are going to subtract the masses of both carbon and hydrogen that we solved in the previous steps. So minus 1.72 times 10 to the negative 3 grams. So this is our carbon. And then we're also going to minus 2.90 times 10 to the negative 4 grams, which is our hydrogen. And then we end up getting a mass of oxygen equal to 7.70 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, so now we know all of our all of our masses of each carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So now we're just going to convert to moles. So for carbon, 1.7 2 times 10 to the negative 3 grams to find its number of moles we just divide by its molar mass which is 12 grams per mole to give us 1.43 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of carbon Then for hydrogen, it is 2.90 times 10 to the negative 4 grams divided by hydrogen's molar mass, which is 1.01 .01 grams per mole, which gives us 2.87 times 10 to the negative 4. And then lastly for oxygen, it is 7.70 .70 times 10 to the negative 4 grams divided by oxygen's molar mass, which is 16 grams per mole to give us 4.81 times 10 to the negative 5 moles of oxygen. Okay, so I'm going to start a new page. I'm running out of space.
So I think this is question nine. And I forgot to add this in the question, but typically when we solve for molecular formula, the molar mass of the sample is given. So the molar mass of ethyl butyrate is equal to 115 grams per mole. So th this will help us in calculating the molecular formula but I'll get to that step in a bit. Okay, so now that we know all the number of moles of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, we divide each of them by the lowest value. So let's look at all the moles values real quick. And you notice that oxygen has the lowest number of moles, which is 4.81 times 10 to the negative 5. So first, let's find our em empirical formula. The number of moles of carbon was 1.43 times 10 to the negative 4. For hydrogen, it was 2.87 times 10 to the negative 4. And then for oxygen, it was 4.81 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay, so now let's divide by the lowest number, which was for oxygen. So we're dividing everything by 4.81 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay, so this gives us an empirical formula equal to C3H6O. Okay, so now to solve for molecular. Uh, we need to find the molar mass of our empirical formula. So to do this, it is 3 times the molar mass of carbon plus 6 times the molar mass of hydrogen plus the molar mass of oxygen. So the molar mass of carbon 12.01 molar mass of how did I write a six there? Hydrogen is 1.01 grams per mole. And then oxygen is just 15.99 grams per mole. So the molar mass of our empirical formula gives uh, 58 grams per mole. Okay, so we know that our molar mass of ethyl butyrate is 115. So we need to divide 115 by our empirical molar mass, which is 58, to get the ratio of the two. So let's do 115 grams per mole divided by 58 grams per mole gives us 2. So therefore, we need to multiply our empirical formula by 2. So this gives us C6H12O2. And this is how we find the molecular formula. OK, 
Okay, so let's see what the junior tutor said. To find the molecular formula, find the empirical formula first. Then from the empirical formula, get the empirical formula weight, and then divide the given molecular weight or molar mass by this. Lastly, multiply the ratio you've obtained to each of the subscripts in the empirical formula to get the molecular formula. To illustrate this process, let us work on an example. A sample of compound with a molar mass of 30 grams per mole, I'm assuming, contains 6.444 grams of boron and 1.803 grams of hydrogen. What is its molecular formula? Okay, so they gave us the mass already, so we don't need to solve for anything of the masses. So we just need to find number of moles. So for boron, they just divided 6.444 by boron's molar mass to get 0 0.59 moles. Number of moles of hydrogen, 1.803 divided by its molar mass, and it got 1.789 moles. And now the number of moles will be in the subscripts and then divide them by the smallest value. So in this case, the smallest value was the number of moles of boron. So they divided both by the 0 0.5960. And then they got the empirical formula, which is BH3. And now they found the empirical formula weight. Uh, yep. And then they divided the molecular weight by the molar mass of the empirical weight to get 2.2. .2. So every time you have like a decimal, uh, we want to round it off to the nearest whole number. So in this case, this is rounded to 2. And now we multiply the ratio to the subscripts of each of the atoms in the empirical formula to determine the molecular formula. So that's how they got B2H6. So this solution is correct.